Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2015 Jeep Renegade, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt Class 3 2 inch trailer hitch receiver. Many of our Jeep customers use your Renegades to do a little bit of everything, and so you're definitely going to want a hitch that can live up to that. And I think this one should get the job done. That's really for a couple different reasons. First one being, it's going to have that 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. It's a super common size and you'll be able to use a ton of different accessories with the hitch. If you plan on doing some towing, this will work out real well too. And that's because it is a class three. So it's gonna have some pretty good weight capacities and allow you to pull that trailer down the road safely. Now I will say probably the very first thing I noticed about the hitch is the fact that it is, for the most part, completely visible. And honestly, it's not a horrible thing on a Jeep. These Renegades tend to actually look a little bit better, a little more stout whenever you can see those accessories, at least in my opinion. But with that being said, since the hitch does hang down a little bit, it is gonna take away some of our ground clearance. So if you tend to off-road your Jeep, something you wanna keep in mind, we're not gonna have as much ground clearance back here. Or if you plan on using, say, cargo carriers, for example, the ones that have a shank with the rise may interest you more because it'll get that accessory a little bit higher off the ground. So the hitch is going to have a reinforced collar for extra strength, and I think it looks pretty good too. It's going to have the standard 5 8 pinhole. Now keep in mind, a pen and clip does not come included with the hitch, but if you need one, you can find it right here at eTrailer. We are going to have plate style safety chain openings and the holes aren't massive but we do have a lot of room to work with so we should be able to use just about any size hook that we might have now as far as the hitch's weight capacities go it's going to have a 525 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating so that's going to be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch that's a pretty high number and you should be able to use just about any size bike rack or cargo carrier that you'd want to, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's going to be 3,500 pounds. And that's going to be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that's the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now, do I suggest it's never a bad idea just to grab your Jeep's owner's manual to make sure your Renegade can pull that much weight safely. And if you do plan on doing some towing, I would suggest picking up an e-trailer ball mount kit and some trailer wiring. That way you'll have a complete package and you'll be safe and legal as you're going down the road. But at the end of the day, if you're looking to do a lot of different things with your hitch, you really can't go wrong with this one. Kind of gives us that complete package. Now, as far as the installation goes, it is pretty time consuming and a little tedious. You really don't have a ton of room to work, so you really have to Take your time and stay patient to get the hitch on. But speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that together now. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements and you're gonna use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be about nine and a half inches. So if you do plan on doing some towing, chances are pretty good you're going to need to get a ball mount with a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's going to be about six inches. And you're gonna use that measurement to help figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. To begin our install, we're gonna be working underneath the back of our Jeep. And we're first gonna start by removing some plugs here on our frame rail. So on our frame rail, we're gonna have three rubber plugs we need to pull out. One here on the bottom and two here on the side. So you can just take a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver just kind of pry behind them and pop them out. Now I want to mention anything we do to this side of our Jeep, we're also going to do on the other side because everything is set up the exact same way. Now what we can do inside of our wheel well is remove this little panel here. Now you don't have to do this, but by removing this out of the way, it does make it a little bit easier to see and work for the upcoming step. So it's just held in place by two little plastic fasteners. I have a Phillips head on them. And you just run those out. And the whole thing should come out at the end there. 
same thing for this one up top. So once those are out, you can kind of take that little panel, pull it down and set it off to the side. So since our hitch is gonna rest right here in this area, all this sealant might interfere with it. So what I'm gonna do is just take a scraper and scrape that out of the way. That way we don't have to worry about kind of fighting it whenever we raise our hitch up into position. Now that we have cleaned all of our silicone off, what we need to do is enlarge this hole right here. So it's on the bottom of the frame rail, closest to the back of our Jeep. Now we need to enlarge this just big enough that we can take the head of our bolt, pass it through inside of the frame rail, as well as our spacer block. So those need to just fit inside of there. So this is pretty thick steel. So I do suggest using a grinding bit like this, or maybe even a hole saw. You could use a hand file, but it might take a little bit of time. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to open this up until our hardware passes through. So we can periodically check our hole to make sure it's large enough. And this looks pretty close. So our spacer block can fit in there. And the head of our bolt can fit in there as well. So now that we have it opened up to the correct size, what we can do is come back with a little spray paint or a paint pen and cover up that bare metal just to help protect it from rust. And while this is drying, we can go ahead and do the other side. So now we can get our hardware inside of the frame rail. We're gonna be using a fish wire to do that. So we're gonna take the coiled end of the fish wire and starting on this hole here on the side of our frame, close to the front of our Jeep, we're gonna put that in and work it back towards the hole that we enlarged. Sometimes you may have to kind of reach your finger in there and help guide it out. But once we have it out, you're gonna take a spacer block Put that over the fish wire and a carriage bolt and you're going to thread that carriage bolt onto the fish wire. From there we can feed our hardware into the frame rail. Pull on the other end of the fish wire until that bolt comes out here on the frame. Now that we verified it lines up and everything, since our hitch is going to go up on the side there, we're just going to push that bolt in the frame rail just barely. That way it don't interfere with the hitch when we put it up. So I'm going to use that same technique and hardware combination to get our hardware and this attachment point here on the side. So again, coil them into the hole there. Drop it down. We'll grab our bolt and our spacer block. Put the block over it and thread the carriage bolt on. And we'll do the same thing. Just feed that hardware up inside. Pull out to make sure it is lined up properly. Just barely push it back in. And for this attachment point, the hole that we enlarged, we're gonna reverse fish wire. So we're just gonna take the coiled end of our fish wire, drop a spacer block over it, and thread on 
our carriage bolt. We're going to feed the carriage bolt in first, followed by the spacer block. Kind of wiggle it around. And we're trying to get our bolt to drop down back through the frame rail. If it's kind of fighting you a little bit, you might have to kind of spin it in there too. But that's how it should end up. Now with an extra set of hands, we can get our hitch into position. So what you want to do is make sure that you run your pull wires through the corresponding holes in your hitch. Carefully work it up. Once you have it in position, can pull out on your side bolts here and once your side bolts are through it'll help kind of support the hitch because there will be a little pressure on them what you want to do is remove one of those pull wires take a flange nut and get that started hand tight at least one on each side that way the hitch will support itself while we work on the rest of the hardware Now that we have our flange nuts connected to our side bolts there, we can work on this one here on the bottom. This one's gonna be a little different. We have one more piece of hardware we need to put on. So we're just gonna take the spacer block, carefully slide that over the bolt. We're gonna take the flange nut and get that started hand tight. So what you can do sometimes when you're trying to start this, you push up that bolt once to go back up inside of the frame. You can see how I'm kind of holding the spacer block here. And what that's gonna do is just put a little bit of pressure on that bolt to keep it steady. It's gonna make it a lot easier to get this nut started. Now that we have all of our hardware in place and hand tight, we can use a three quarter inch socket to snug it all down. Once you have all the hardware snug, don't forget to come back in with the torque wrench and tighten it all down to the amount specified in your instructions. Now that we have all of our bolts torqued down, we can go ahead and reinstall our little access panels the opposite way that we remove them. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Curt Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2015 Jeep Renegade.